director of health programs. Um, I've taken on a lot of fitness initiatives um, recently, so I am your fitness expert for the day. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the questions that you guys submitted, a little bit about some of the tools that we have for you, um, and then we'll open it up for more questions at the end. Um, today I have a co-host, hopefully, if your sound is working. Amber, let's see if it works. Hi guys, I'm Amber, Athletic Director for Region 8. Um, I'm happy to be here and hopefully my sound continues for this whole hour. Um, if not, we're just going to have to make do. Um, but we're lucky to have a Special Olympic athlete, um, David Thompson from Oregon, join us um, on the call on today's show, I should say. Um, hi David, how are you doing? Doing pretty good, how about you? I'm doing well. Um, can we just get a little bit of background information on you? So, like, what sports do you participate in with Special Olympics? Of course. So, first, I'm from Oregon, Wisconsin. Um, I've been a Special Olympics athlete for it's my 10th year. I do basketball, track and field, softball, um, every, every, basically every sport all year round. Yeah. Awesome. So, you're, you stay fit and active all year round. That's great. Can, you, right. share, can you share with us what your favorite Special Olympic memory is? Um, one of my favorite memories is uh, going to Seattle and competing and bowling in uh, the USA Games, and uh, that was one of the best experiences of my life. Uh-oh. We might have lost her. <laughs> While she's working on it, I got a couple more questions for you. Um, so I, I know the quarantine can be kind of hard on, on folks staying at home and not being able to play their sports and stuff. So... How are you doing, David? How do you feel? How do you how do you try to stay positive during all of this? Well, you know, I take it day by day. You know, there, there's days that are tough. There's days that are easy. But the thing that I keep thinking about is that, you know, the days that we can get back to normal. You know, and that's, that's the reason, that's the motivation that keeps me going, is that times are tough now. But, you know, maybe a year or so down the road, I don't even know, you know, soon rather than later, I don't really know. No matter what, I'm not rushing at the bit. I'm just trying to get my body back to where it was and just trying to keep positive as best I can. Awesome. That's a great mindset to have. <laughs> um, while Amber kind of figures out her audio, um, I'm going to share a little bit about um, some of the tools that we have related to fitness. Um, so I'm actually going to screen share for just a second. So hopefully this works. Um, let's try this out. Can you guys see um, our website on here? Yay. Okay. So I just wanted to share two things with you. So if you're on our website and you click on this health tab, one of the options is Fit5. Um, Fit5 is a tool that Special Olympics International put out um, for athletes to use, for coaches to use, um, whoever it may be. Um, and right here, you can click on the guide and I'll pull it up for us. Um, and it talks about exercising five days each week eating five fruits and vegetables every day and drinking five bottles of water every day. Um, it's a really nice tool, um, keeps it very simple. Um, fitness doesn't have to be hard, doesn't have to be complicated, um, but it's a really nice tool um, to reference if you ever need help. So it gets into different types of exercises that you can do. It gives you some examples um, of exercises you can do at home, which is really great, especially right now. Um, this resource is good all year round, but especially now when we can't be at our sport practices with our teammates, um, it's a great chance to um, get more physically fit at home by ourselves. So there's some exercises um, a little bit further down. Let's see if I can scroll fast here. Um, it gets into nutrition, um, which I know a lot of you guys had questions on that we'll get to in a little bit about um, different healthy lunch options and healthy snacks. Um, this is actually a great source of information for that. So it talks about healthy foods, how you should be um, fixing your plate every day. Um, and it even gives you um, different portion options and some meals, which I think is really great. Um, a lot of you had questions about what are some healthy lunch options or snacks. So this resource um, is just a piece of it, but um, is a great tool to refer to. So Healthy snacks here are some um, we'll talk a little bit more about later, but um, I eat almost all of these all the time. So these are really great options. Um, and then a little bit further down, it gets into hydration too. So I, if you haven't already, I would definitely check this out. Um, along with the Fit5, 
are fitness cards. So these get a little bit more into the exercises. Um, and then Special Olympics International even put out some videos to go along with those cards. Um, they're awesome. If you haven't checked them out already, you definitely should. And I know a few of you had asked um, about different levels of fitness, because um, I know there's a wide variety of fitness levels with our athletes. Um, so if you click on Fit5, um, it has the guide again here, but then there's some videos. So level one is the lowest level, starts out nice and easy with the different types of activity and it goes up from there. So there's level two all the way up to level five. So they're nice short clips, um, make it very easy, very basic, um, but they're really nice um, as a reference to make sure you're doing it properly with the proper form and things like that. So again, if you haven't checked them out, I would definitely do that. Um, back to our website, there's also a tracker that can go along with it. Um, this is definitely an optional um, tool for you, but you can track your exercise. I'll click on this to make this a little bigger. Um, you can track your exercise each day of the week, your nutrition. These dots are for the five fruits and vegetables to have every day, um, and then the water here as well. So um, again, this is just an optional, so, um, an optional tool for you guys to use, but I think it's really nice to kind of keep track of what we're doing while we're at home. One more thing I want to talk about on our website quick before um, we jump into some of the questions you guys had was, again, under that health tab, there's the school of strength um, button. You can click on that. This is just another tool put out by Special Olympics International. So this one is a little bit more focused on physical activity. So um, we're actually doing a challenge starting on Monday. So I definitely recommend checking this out. Um, but the school of strength has another tracker if you want to use it. Um, and it also has, um, if you click on this link here, it'll bring you to the Special Olympics International webpage, which has videos. So I don't know if you guys know who this is, but this is Becky Lynch. She is a WWE superstar. I'm not well versed in WWE, but I know she's pretty famous. Um, and so it's really awesome that she's partnered with us to make these videos. Um, so if you scroll down a little bit, um, talks about what you'll need for them, which is very little equipment. You actually really don't need anything if you don't have it. Um, but here are the videos start. So they go right along with the Fit5 with the flexibility, endurance, strength, and things like that. So it, it's just another resource for you guys to have um, while we're at home and we can't be at sport practices. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen here so we can get back to the video. There we go. Um, and then we're going to jump into questions. So our original plan was to have Amber. Brittany, I'm here. Brittany, I'm here on the phone. So I'll just have to do it that way. <laughs> well, then we can go back to our original plan. <laughs> okay. So I wanted to thank everybody um, that's on the call today. Um, when you registered, you had asked some really great questions. So we're going to kind of go through it. Um, most of like the most popular questions right now. Um, and then at the end, if there's time, we will open it up for people to ask um, on the live show. So our first question deals with exercising and social distancing. When is it okay and what can we do? So this is a great question. I know a lot of you have this right now. Um, it's kind of confusing what we can and what we can't do, but basically we can still exercise. I know we're stuck at home, um, but you can definitely exercise at home. I just showed you some really great resources with the Fit5 and with the School of Strength. Um, so those are definitely options that you can do inside your home. Um, it's also um, really nice outside and you can definitely get outside. So you can go for walks, you can go for bike rides. Um, it's nice to get about 30 minutes of exercise every day. That's what they say, especially if you're following the Fit5. Um, but it's also important to get up and move throughout the day. Um, I don't know about you, but um, working from home, I'm, I'm sitting in my chair a lot, or at night, I'm watching TV a lot, and I'm doing a lot of sitting. Um, so it's important to remember to get up and move a little bit throughout the day. So um, that could be, you know, if we're watching TV, it's get up during the commercials. Um, if you drink more water, you'll probably be getting up to go to the bathroom more. It's kind of funny, but it's true. <laughs> I've definitely been having to take more bathroom breaks because I'm trying to get in my water. Got my water here. Hey, Brittany, you got a question from the group. Yeah. All right. I'm going to unmute Wayne. He's got his hand up. Uh, go ahead, Wayne. What, what you got for us? 
Uh, well, I played Special Olympics for a long time. I'm I'm a seven-time champion gold medalist, and, and then I like to be like like Dale Senior, Richard Petty, and Jimmy Johnson. Nice. Because I'm on Team Milwaukee. All right. Go Team Milwaukee. <laughs> Thanks, well, Wayne. I'm on, well, I'm on the New Berlin team for softball. Ah, okay. Thanks, Wayne. Yep. Um, just the one thing I was going to say about if you do get outside um, for walks or runs or whatever it may be, um, just remember to try to stay at least six feet apart from people. Um, especially, you know, this day and age, we're, we're really trying to be careful not to have too many interactions with other people. So if you need to wait or cross the street when you're out for a walk, um, definitely do that. But you can still get out, get that fresh air. Um, it's really good for you to get outside and um, do that. Some other things um, for outdoor activities, somebody I think had a specific question about that. Um, if you're not much into running or biking or anything like that, you can do other things outside. Um, I've seen a lot of sidewalk chalk lately, um, which can be really fun. Um, it's not necessarily a exercise, but it's something to get outside and something to do. Um, I've also seen people make obstacle courses out of them, which can be fun, or hopscotch. Um, I've seen different scavenger hunts online where you make a list of different things you have to find around your neighborhood and you get out and go for a walk and try to find those things. Could be something like a red car or a bird or, you know, it, you can be as creative as you want. Um, similarly, I've seen like an outdoor bingo. It's kind of set up the same idea. Um, if it gets nicer out, maybe break out the sprinkler or something and run around outside. There's definitely lots of things we can do. We don't have to just be stuck on our couch this whole time. So the one thing I will say is I know a lot of gyms aren't open. Um, they might be opening soon, but just be careful um, doing that, um, washing our hands, staying six feet away from people and things like that. But we can definitely be exercising. Um, David, what have you been doing during this time to kind of still exercise, but be socially distant? Well, I actually pushed myself more this time than I've ever had in my life. I've actually walked, um, I mean, uh, upwards of six miles, which I never thought I could do. Um, nice. And it, it, I think the biggest thing is just keeping my mind in it and keep on going and don't stop. Awesome. I love that. Amber, are you still still around? What have you been doing? I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, having two very active kids, um, I have spent a lot of time outside with them, kind of walking, scootering, playing wiffle ball, just so we're not breaking any windows with the baseball since my son can't play baseball yet. Um, we've picked up the game of bocce, so I've introduced my kids to that, and they thought that's been pretty fun. Um, we've thrown the frisbee, the football. We have made obstacle courses, too, um, dealing with different scooter things, hopscotch with um, – push-ups and sit-ups and all that kind of stuff when we're timing. My kids are very competitive, so then they race against each other with that. Um, we have been drawing with chalk, too, on the driveway. Um, and I also have been participating in um, online workout classes. Um, that also leads me to our next question. Um, does Special Olympics Wisconsin offer any exercise videos online? Yeah, so it's kind of a, a yes and no answer. So yes, we have the videos. I kind of showed some of them before with the Fit Five and the School of Strength. Um, like I say, if you haven't checked those out, I definitely would. It's a great place to start. Um, there's also a lot of resources online these days. Um, Anytime Fitness is doing online videos. They have a video every day of the week. Um, specifically on Wednesday, they cater to the Special Olympics population. Um, so they show a lot of different um, adaptions and things that you can do um with different exercises which is really awesome um we potentially might do a zoom workout similar to the setup we got going here but doing a workout so stay tuned that might be coming up soon um but then i know someone asked specifically about um strength and stretches for proper technique while we're at home which i know can be hard um i would definitely use the videos that we shared earlier to help with that um we're working on incorporating fitness into our coaches training. So once we are back at practices, um, we're really wanting our coaches to kind of use these tools and um, make sure we have a better understanding of proper technique and things like that. But um, yes, we do have some videos online. So Brittany, the question was, what if you don't have the stuff to do the workouts? So a lot of the workouts that I showed before on the Fit5 and the School of Strength don't require any equipment. 
Um, if anything, they might say that to have a chair um, if you need extra support, which I'm hoping everybody has a chair in their house. Um, but you actually shouldn't need any extra equipment for them. If you wanted to make them harder, you could hold, um, if you have weights or even um, cans of soup or bottled water or anything like that can be heavy enough to use. Um, but most of the exercises that um, are on those two resources don't require any equipment. And, oops. Perfect. Okay. So, um, are you good? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so let's take a moment and take a quick, quick poll. So, what is your favorite form of exercise? I don't know. So the pull up. I think we'll need Don's assistance here because he's our host. Yeah. Um, so Don, if you want to launch the first poll mm -hmm. to be form of exercise. So everyone, um, you should see in a few minutes here a poll there we go. on the screen. Um, so what is your favorite form of exercise? Biking, running, weightlifting, walking, dancing or Zumba, sports, yoga, online workout class, or swimming. Okay, we got 11, 12 of 42 people. Let's get another 30 seconds or so. And I actually don't see anything done, so. We... Okay, yeah, this is the opposite of what had happened last time. Yeah. <laughs> Right now, walking is is blowing everything else out of the water. While we're waiting for the poll, David, how long does your do your your walks take? Um, about an hour and a half normally. That's about five five and a half miles normally. Yeah, and you just kind of have a nice nice pace, or you just kind of yeah, strolling because I, I, I keep a straight pace. Oh, he muted. Um, uh, just kind of strolling. There you go, David. Yeah. Um, and I think that's important for people to realize they don't have to go fast either. It's like, you know, just getting out there and doing something is, is, uh, is very beneficial. It's better than nothing. Yeah. Oh, come on, people. We only got 26 people voting. Come on, guys. Tell us what your favorite activity or form of exercise is. <laughs> right, here we go. There's Tell no me. right or wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it looks like we're stagnant, so we're going to end the poll. And the winner is walking. Almost 40% of you said that walking is your favorite form of exercise. Nice. That's awesome. It's a super easy thing to do right now, um, especially when the weather's nice. I know it's supposed to be nice this weekend. Um, every, every day after work, I've been walking with my husband and my daughter and our dogs, and we've been going. We haven't been quite doing the six miles that David's doing, but we do about two. <laughs> um, yeah, it's nice. I like getting out and walking. So that's awesome. Especially right. with the weather getting nicer out, it's, it will be easier for everybody to do that. And hopefully we, the rain stays away now because I'm kind of sick of it the last two days of pouring rain. Okay, so on to our third question. What are some ways to stay motivated to exercise or be healthy, especially right now? Cutting in and out, Amber. Oh, no. Oh, do you want me to, can you hear me now? Yeah. Why don't you say Are we more? good? Yeah. Okay. So our third question is, what are some ways to stay motivated to exercise or be healthy, especially right now? Um, why don't we start with David? What do you think about that one? Um, well, the biggest thing is, you know, I have a lot of friends come to me and ask me the same question. You know, what do you, what do you, what do you do? And I mean, the biggest thing is, is I just, I just try to keep a level head. That, that's the biggest thing is just try to keep, you know, your head forward, not, don't get depressed and everything because sitting at home all the time, you can get depressed. It's not hard. And so just get up and get moving because if we get moving. I mean, you'll feel better. That's yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think for me, I always ask myself, like, why is this important? Why, why do I want to be doing this? And remind yourself of that, whatever that answer is, remind yourself of that. So for me, it's, it's honestly, it's my daughter. I want to be able to keep up with her. She's getting more mobile now. She's, she's about one. 
So she's crawling and she'll be running around soon. And I just, I want to be able to keep up with her when she wants to play and set a good example for her. I think that's important. So whenever I don't feel like doing my workout or when I feel like eating crummy food, I try to remind myself like, hey, I'm setting a good example for her. I need to do this not only for me, but um, for our whole family. Um, and I think also I, I, I saw this somewhere, it was online somewhere, but we can spend this time right now during quarantine sitting around, doing nothing, eating garbage, and come out of it feeling gross and crummy, or we can make the most of it and come out of it in the best shape that we possibly can. And if you have those two options, I don't know about you, but I would rather come out of this the best that I can be. I mean, David, you said it before, make the most of it, right? Like this is, this is the hand we're dealt and just go for it. Um, so I just think about that. Like I have two choices. I can go the lazy route or I can try to stay fit and, um, make good choices. So I rather do that. Um, some other things that help me is, um, especially for drinking water, because I'm not very good at that, but I set reminders for myself. Um, I do it on my phone, or you could even like put notes around the house. Um, maybe put a note on the fridge that says like, are you hungry? <laughs> um, make it fun, um, especially with exercise. Um, exercise shouldn't be a chore. It should be something you enjoy. So a lot of you like walking, then that could be your exercise. Don't make yourself do something you don't like doing. Find something that you like and do that. Um, and the same thing kind of goes with food too. Um, find, find things you like that are healthy and stick with those. You don't have to force yourself to eat stuff you don't want to. Um, just try to find things that you like and things can be flavorful even if they're healthy. Um, so really try to make them taste good. Um, some other things that help too are uh, rewards. Um, I know that sounds kind of weird, but I actually do this with myself a lot. So if I get in all my workouts for the week, I might give myself a reward at the end of the week. Um, a lot of people might think that that's food. Um, and I actually try to avoid rewarding myself with food because I think that can kind of have the opposite effect. If I reward myself with a bowl of ice cream, well, that's not really a healthy choice. So I try to reward myself with something else. So maybe it's a movie night or um, bubble baths aren't actually that appealing to me, but I know they are to other people. So maybe that's your reward is you get a night to yourself, um, whether it's a bubble bath or picking your own movie or a show. Um, but I think sometimes rewards can be helpful. So David, do you do any of that? Do you ever reward yourself for, for exercising or? Well, uh, the one thing I've learned during this whole time is that I really got to start watching that. Because let me tell you, now that I don't have the gym, I can feel that time when I decide to go for the food. Um, and so now it's just, I honestly don't really reward myself right now. I just try to keep, you know, just try to keep, either if I stop now and I have, if I have something bad, then I, then I get off track for like a week. So I try to keep on track the entire week. Yeah, for sure. So Brittany, oh, those are? A couple oh. things for the chat. Um, one from Lisa, she talks about she goes walking with her dad. And then um, Chelsea uh, has lost 20 pounds doing Zumba and actually also has a question for you. So I'm going to unmute you, Chelsea. Why don't you go ahead and, and ask the question to Brittany that you put in the chat? Um, how do you have someone keep not doing so much junk food and keep them with drinking more water. Yeah, that's a tough one, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's a roommate yeah. that she's going to try, wants to try to educate a little bit about how to drink more water and eat better and maybe even do a little bit more exercising. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think there's a few things. One, um, lead by example. I think if you were to have water and healthy food for, for your meals, she'll probably see that and maybe try to to imitate that. Um, another thing could just be sharing the resources that I shared in the beginning. Um, a, lot, a lot of times people just don't know if it's a healthy choice or not. So maybe, um, you know, you kind of, you don't want to, you kind of tread lightly. You don't want to be rude or anything, but just say like, yeah. hey, you know that this is a better option. Um, and another thing for me, I know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love a good bag of chips and a bowl of ice cream. I, yeah. I, I do like those things too, but 
um, especially right now when we're when we are stuck at home, I just try not to buy those things. So that way, when I do go to the fridge or to the pantry, I don't, they're not even a choice. So um, yeah. I only have healthy options. Um, so I would recommend that maybe next time. I don't know how you get your groceries, but um, if it's you guys going to the store or someone bringing them to you, just maybe ask not to get those things. And then maybe yeah. it's not an option. Very yeah, because I'm gluten free and I have to be very careful with what I eat. So yeah, well, congratulations on the weight loss. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. Great. So right now we're going to open it up and um, I'd like five people to tell us what you do to stay motivated. So if Don can see people raising their hands or something, he can unmute you. Let's see. How about Pat? Pat K. Pat. Yeah, you with your hand up. Nicholas, that's you. Oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're welcome. Um, you're welcome. Nice to meet um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Um, um, the way I stay motivated is that my mom, we take a walk uh, uh, around the around the um, ar ar around the the neighborhood. By my neighborhood, we have like a like I have a pond. There's like a subdivision where you enter out. There's a, like a bunch of hotels and stuff like that. And there's a pond where geese and ducks swim. And then, and there's an owl that is nesting in our forest. So we, so we walk around and yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually a great horned owl. So that's like a big, big deal. So it's, it's, it's kind of like, I, I'm crazy. So yeah, so yeah. That's great. Very good. Okay. Anybody else? Oh, okay, we got Ben. Let me unmute you, Ben, one second. All right, Ben, go ahead. How's it going? Ed, we're doing great. How you doing, Ben? I'm doing well. So what are you doing to keep healthy and, and active? I'm motivated. Motivated, sorry. <laughs> I was walking with my father around the whole neighborhood. And at some point, I was on trail for about 20 minutes. Nice and job. Every, um, every Monday, I'm supposed to work out, but unfortunately, the Prairie Athletic Club is shut down to the COVID-19 thing, which is just disappointing. Yeah, that can be hard, but I'm, I'm glad you're getting out and walking. That's a good alternative. All right, looks like Mike. Staying healthy. Yeah, you're staying healthy? Is that what motivates you? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sometimes that's all it takes is that you just want to be a healthy person, and that's, that's enough. That's great. Perfect. Well, thank you guys for sharing. Let's go on to our next question. Um, what are some healthy snack ideas? Yeah, so um, I'm going to default to my Fit5 guide because I think there's some really good options in there. They have um, cottage cheese, there's um, veggies and hummus and things like that, apples and peanut butter. Um, I try to stick to snacks that um, are relatively easy because <laughs> why not? Um, so I, I just like to have veggies and fruit on hand. So I have some apples in my fridge. I love apples and peanut butter. Um, bananas and peanut butter, um, even just some veggies to munch on. I always have like carrots and um, cherry tomatoes and bell peppers that I can dip into hummus or something like that. Um, those are a lot of great choices. Um, yeah, it David, looks like uh, Lisa's got a really good idea. Lisa. Lisa Fusco, oh. what's your great idea you just had? You put it in the chat. My great idea was to eat fruit and veggies and walk with my mom and dad. And I got second place in bowling. <laughs> Great job. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think it can be really helpful um, when you are buying fruits and veggies to have them prepped and ready to go. I think you kind of have that there is prepare them. I think that can be a big step. So if you already have them washed and cut up and ready, um, it just makes it that much easier to grab them for a snack when you want one. Um, David, what do you like to grab for a healthy snack? 
I'm a big peanut butter and apple guy and applesauce yeah. and uh, just simple, simple, simple. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, I, I agree, David. I yeah. agree, David. I love apples and peanut butter and veggies and Greek yogurt dip, but my go-to is the crunchy peanut butter. So, <laughs> okay. So we talked snack ideas. What are some healthy lunch ideas? So other than the stuff that's in the Fit5 guide, which I'm going to plug it one more time, um, I like to make leftovers for lunch. So when I'm making a really healthy dinner, I make a little bit more and then I save some of it and put it in the fridge and then that way I have my lunch for the next day. Um, it's a really easy way because then all you have to do is reheat it. You don't have to think too much about it. Um, and then you know you have something healthy because you had something healthy the day before. Um, so that's my secret. David, what do you like to do for lunch? I'm a big chicken breast guy, um, turkey burger, and then always with a veggie and a fruit. Do you have a favorite vegetable that you, it's like your go-to? Um, sugar snap pea. Ooh, okay. that's a good nice. one. Nice. Nice. Okay, so we have one more poll for you guys. Um, what are the healthiest options to have with your veggies? So... Don, if we can pull that up, you can see our different options. Poll two. Yep. So the healthiest options to have with your veggies, ranch, sour cream, hummus, guacamole, cheese dip, or plain Greek yogurt. And Jeannie reminded me that if anybody's having trouble with the poll, you, so what you want to do is you want to, you should see the, little square pop up on the screen and then next to either ranch or sour cream or hummus or guac or cheese dip or plain yogurt you would click on the button um i'm assuming it's a button because it looks different for me because i'm seeing the results but you would click on that and that allows you to select your choice and for this one you can actually select as many options as you want so you're for this one we're trying to pick the healthiest options so i'll give you a clue there's more than one right answer <laughs> Ooh, so far it's neck and neck between hummus and plain Greek yogurt. Good job. <laughs> hummus is leading by one. I can't vote or I would vote for hummus. There's more than one right answer. <laughs> you have a favorite type of hummus? Uh, yeah, pine nut hummus. Mm. Okay. It has, it has uh, the nuts in it and it's a little bit oily, so I get my little bit of oil fix there, but it's a good oil. It's a, it's a Mediterranean oil. I like that one. I also like the roasted red pepper. Uh, my wife likes that one. That one's a good one too. Okay, a couple more seconds and we'll close this in three, two, one, and and share results and it looks like hummus by one over plain greek yogurt followed by guacamole ranch uh cheese dip and sour cream who voted for sour cream <laughs> so this one was kind of a, a tricky a tricky question because there's more than one right answer so the, the three answers that I would say are the healthiest would be hummus, guacamole, and plain Greek yogurt. So those are all very good options. Um, with anything, you do want to kind of moderate how much you're eating. You don't want to eat like a giant tub of guacamole or even hummus. Um, but those are really good options, especially if you don't like veggies plain. It's nice to dip in something. But um, ranch, sour cream, and even cheese dip are probably not the best options. So if you can... Try to find some of those alternatives. Okay, next question. What are some healthy options when ordering at a restaurant? This is a good question. Um, so this is kind of hard because it kind of depends on the restaurant, but I do want to say regardless of where you are and what you're ordering, think about portions because restaurants tend to give us, even when you're ordering a salad, they tend to give us way too much food. So um, a few tips for that would be getting your to-go box right away when you get your meal um, and just putting half your burger in that or half your sandwich or whatever it is uh, or half your salad even. Um, so you're not tempted to eat all the food because they do give us way too much food. 
Um, another thing is a lot of restaurants, especially the nicer ones, will give you like bread or rolls to start your meal. Um, or if you're at like a Mexican restaurant, they'll give you like chips and salsa. Um, maybe just skip that part, right? Because it's just um, something to fill you up while you're sitting around waiting. And then when you actually get to your healthy meal, you're too full. So my recommendations would be kind of skip those breads and rolls that they give you in the beginning. Um, watch how many portions they give you. Um, in general, look for veggie heavy meals. So that could be a salad, it could be a wrap. Um, maybe there's roasted veggies or something. Um, try to look for those types of things. Um, the biggest advice I can give is to avoid fried food. Um, this one's really hard for me because I love french fries. I really do. <laughs> um, but if you can, substitute french fries for a side salad or something like that. Um, maybe avoid a lot of those appetizers. They tend to be more fried food. Um, so I, I don't really have a good option or a good answer to that question because it kind of depends what restaurant you're at. Um, but try to find veggie heavy things. Um, and then another big thing I can say, get water. <laughs> avoid the soda, avoid the drink, get water. One, it's free, so that's nice. Um, but that's a really easy way to make your meal that much healthier is to just go with the water. Perfect. An another great question we received um, was when or can, should I drink water versus Gatorade? Yeah, this is kind of a tough question because I think a lot of people think Gatorade's a really good healthy option and it can be, but it's kind of deceiving. So Gatorade is basically sugar water, uh, sugar salt water, um, and it really should only be used when you're doing a really high intensity workout, when you're like sweating a ton. Because the idea is you're sweating out all of this basically salt water, and Gatorade will replace it. But if you're not sweating a lot, um, you don't really need Gatorade. Um, so think of like these high, high athletes, Serena Williams, um, the NBA players, like, yeah, they're sweating a ton. They need Gatorade. When we're going for a walk, we're probably not sweating that much that we need Gatorade. So my, my biggest advice would just be stick with water. Um, if you do like Gatorade, um, I would dilute it with water so you can kind of go half and half. That's a really good option. Um, but in general, you don't really actually need Gatorade a whole lot. Yeah, At least if I, you have I, some hand raise, hand yeah, raises though. <laughs> Sophia has been, been uh, so, so Sophia? Yeah. What's up? Well, uh, is ice water an alternative? Is what? Ice water an alternative? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because my boyfriend and his same and his bro brother, they drink ice water. So they don't, I mean, he has been trying to drink water as much as he can, but he really sticks to kind of what you mentioned with, with the Gatorade and stuff, but they do drink other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, the Gatorade question. And coffee. That, yeah, that's great. It, so the Gatorade, I will say even, you know, those that know Tyler and all the running he does, his track coach still, even after a hard workout, won't let him drink more than like a diluted um, Gatorade. So it's just not really, really needed. The other thing uh, with what Sophia had mentioned with ice water, some people will take some fruit and, and squish it and, and put it in their, their water to make it taste a little bit better. Uh, so that's really a good option too. Um, another hand up is Mike, let me unmute you, Mike. Go ahead, Mike. Yes, I, the new, there are three and a half teaspoons of sugar and eight ounces of Gatorade. Wow. wow. So 12 That's ounces of Gatorade, of 12 ounces of Gatorade is five teaspoons, 20 ounces is nine teaspoons. Yeah, it's a lot. Nine. David, how do you feel about Gatorade? Do you drink it a lot or no? I try, I try to avoid it if anything, yeah. Yeah. All right, so I see Bob, Bob Larson drinking something on screen. What are you drinking? Or the count that says Bob Larson. <laughs> Caught you by surprise. What were you drinking? Um, tea. Okay, so what kind of tea are you drinking? Lemon. Is, is, so lemon flavor, is it, is it sugar-free? 
No, it's not. Mm. <laughs> gotcha. I'm going to call them out, Don. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Things are okay once in a while. Just so you don't want to make a habit of always having, you know, stuff. You want to try to get the water in there every once in a while. So. Okay. And, uh, hey, I'm not shy to call people out. I think our athletes should start calling out our coaches sometimes, huh? Anybody agree with that one? Yeah. Uh, looks like Pat had his hand up. Pat? Go ahead, I Pat. Might be, I think his name might be Nicholas, if I heard oh, it Nicholas. before. Nicholas, I'm sorry. Nicholas, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, um, I, oh, I, I drink, like, a bunch of juices and stuff like that. Um, also, that my mom gets this, I guess, a juice brand called Honest Kids. Now, Honest Kids, it's a, is it, is, it comes in grape, mango, grape, orange, cherry, any type of flavor you could imagine. And, and, and it does have a little bit of, of sugar in it. It's still a healthy drink, but I, I, I drink almond milk and, uh, and also water, stuff like that. Nice, yeah, nice. juice can be a good option, um, but just like anything in moderation, because it can be really sugary too. It depends what you're drinking. Right? Do one more. Is a good Nate, one. Nate has had his hand up for a while. Nate, what do you got for us? Yeah, mm -hmm. Don. Hey, Don. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. Schmitty. Yeah, done. <laughs> you staying healthy? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I think we have one more question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So our oh, are we ready to move on to the next question, or do we have hands up? No. Go uh, ahead. We're good. Okay. So our last question: What are carbs? <laughs> so this one could be a really long explanation, but I'm going to make it really short. So. I, I think a lot of times we hear the word carbs. Um, it's kind of a, a, hot, a hot word in the nutrition world. Um, but really carbs are just a fancy way of saying sugar. Um, sugar, starches, and fibers. Um, and they can be in fruit, vegetables, grains, dairy. They can be in a lot of things. So I think sometimes people hear the word carbs and they think carbs are bad. Um, that's not necessarily true. Um, some are, but some are fine. So don't get too caught up on the word carbs. Um, try to think there's good carbs, like, I mean, vegetables are carbs and, and fruits. Um, those are good things to have. So don't, don't get too caught up on it. Um, some bad carbs that you do want to avoid can be found in like processed foods or white bread, white rice and white pastas and those types of things. Um, I see Sophia's got a nice chart showing that. Um, so my advice really is to not worry too much about the word carbs and just stick to real foods, real foods that grow in the ground, fruits, vegetables, things like that, and you should be okay. Um, everything's fine in moderation, um, but really just try to stick to, to the real food. Perfect. Well, why don't we, we've got a few minutes if we want to open it up and if you guys have any questions that you want to ask right now, we can um, raise your hand and Don can call on you and you can ask, ask them. Sophia. Yay. Um, uh, what, what would you recommend for a heart healthy? Say that one more time. What, what would you recommend for a heart healthy? Heart healthy. Yeah. Oh. Because my, my boyfriend has had surgery um, when he was a baby. And uh, so, because he was adopted from South Korea and stuff. And he is a very healthy guy. He eats a lot of, you know, fruits and vegetables and salads and stuff. But I think he's a little bit too much on the carbs, I think. <laughs> so I'm just, I, I'm looking out for him. I love him. So oh, that's good. Yeah. Well, I think first and foremost would be to ask his doctor. So I don't want to, I don't want to pretend to be his doctor. So I think that would be the first thing I'd say, um, especially when it comes to exercise. I know um, exercise can be very, very good for you, especially your heart, your heart health. Um, but as always, if you're starting a new exercise program or really amping up your exercise, um, you want to make sure that um, you're able to, so check out um, with his doctor first. Um, but it sounds like if he's eating fruits and veggies and eating salads and eating healthy, that he's on a good start. So I think he's doing pretty good. 
Any other questions? Uh, yeah, one, let's see, we got a couple. Um, the account says Michelle. I am Nathan Kehoe, and Nathan. my favorite healthy choice is pizza. I'm like a pizza man, so um, I love pizza. I eat like every day, and I just feel like a stronger person playing basketball. <laughs> Did I hear you eat pizza every day? Yep, I do. No, no, you I don't know if that's the healthiest choice there. <laughs> <laughs> I would maybe I love pizza too, but I try to limit how often I have it. What kind of what kind of pizza do you like? Yeah, tell them tell her what kind you have. Cauliflower uh, crust pizza. Uh, cauliflower crust pizza. So that is my oh, favorite. That's pretty good. All right. All eat. right. Now I'll take it. All right. I bet you got a few vegetables on there too, huh? Lots. Oh, oh yeah. Uh what? You have lots of vegetables. Yeah, I, I, I like, uh, I'm peas. I'm a Packer fan. And like green drinks. And, you know, I like green drinks. And so it gives me nerves and it helps me like, I do like exercise. Like I go and swing every day and it just goes up my strength. Um, I did softball and I was a second place champion back in 2019. So I feel good and energized. I play basketball with my dad and I feel really strong. I'm a stronger, I'm a strong person. I'm 20, I'm going to turn 21 in September. So I'm really excited. Awesome. And also, I love my mom very much. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you do something special for her on Mother's Day. <laughs> That's right. awesome. Well, thank you for sharing, Nathan. Any other questions? Looks like uh, Nicholas might have another question. Nicholas, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Um, as you were saying about the, about carbs, I. I've been, well, okay. So uh, over like the the quarantine thing, I was, I, 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 my mom had been like buying a lot of bread and like a lot of carbs. And guess what? I got so hungry that I actually ate two almond butter sandwiches and actually ate a double one. And guess what? I could even, I probably had ate at least five sandwiches in like a couple of in like two weeks. <laughs> and, all yeah. Right. So, so it's, I'm trying to like portion myself. I'm a really fan of, of, of sandwiches. Don't get me wrong. I love sandwiches. I, I even love pizza too. And a lot of stuff. <laughs> I love candy also. <laughs> I don't know about the candy, but everything else is okay. Well, in moderation. We have smart, <laughs> smart sweets and, and there's like these gummy bears that are three grams of sugar. Because like a nutrition server, we find them. They're like they're like three grams of sugar. Yeah. Awesome. Any other questions for the group? L Lisa. Oh, sorry. I got unmuted. Ben. Ben, and then Lisa. Oh, okay. Sorry. Go ahead, Ben. So, what's your favorite food to eat at a game or something? Any like whether it's a card game or a badger game? What's your favorite food? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I usually don't eat there because they're so pricey. <laughs> um, I'm very I don't frugal. Eat there either. <laughs> um, I do love nachos, but I probably shouldn't eat them. <laughs> uh, yeah. Only once in a while is a treat. I usually drink water at games. Okay. That's a good question. Eat. There's not many healthy options when you go to a sporting event, so I usually try to eat ahead of time. All right, Lisa. Or the count says Lisa. Andrew. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Why is our apples healthy? <laughs> oh boy. Um, <laughs> well, I can tell you that they have a lot of fiber in them, which is good for your digestive system. <laughs> um, <laughs> but in general, most fruits and vegetables are going to be healthy for you. So. That's a, that's a tricky question. <laughs> Should we end on that one then, you think? I think that's a good idea. Well, thank you all for joining us. Um, I hope this was helpful and you enjoyed um, taking a little time out of your day to learn about some health and fitness stuff. Um, we'll be doing this again next week at the same time. Um, I don't know if it'll be a similar format or if we'll mix it up, but um, we'll be here regardless. So um, hopefully you can join us again. 
Thank you, Amber, and thank you, David, for helping out um, hosting this week. Um, it was nice to have you on. Of course. Have a great day, everyone. You too. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> what are you hanging around for, Peter? <laughs> they called him out. <laughs> I have uh, I'm eating vegetables, I'm eating yogurt, and I'm I'm just uh uh, once in a while, I go to my apartment by walking, so and then go grocery shopping. So that's my part. And uh, uh, and then for my spare time, I like to play guitar and piano. And I'm excited about you going to Colorado for a snowshoe. Oh yeah, that's right. So uh, so Peter's our our world game. You know what? Maybe I've got uh, Steve Woodard coming on the show tomorrow, but maybe. Um, in two weeks, Peter, we can have you uh, be a, a, a co-host with me. Okay, uh, but still on Zoom? Yeah. Okay, all right. All right, see you later, Peter. See you next time. What are you doing, Ben? Are you just hanging out? Hi, no, no, I don't know how to... Uh, you don't know how to get out of it? All right, I can do that. No, see ya. Okay. I'm just waiting until everyone gets <laughs> off. <laughs> I'm just waiting for anyone to get off. See what happens. Dan, are you working? Uh, no, I tell I go. I'm going back to work. I'm going back to work on May 18. Yeah, Tyler like May 18, back going back to work. Yeah, Tyler went hopefully, back. I hopefully I'm safe. Yeah, he's he said that they're doing pretty good. So, all right, Ben, you take care. Tell your mom I said hi. Yeah, bye. Well, have all a great right, day. Yeah. Bye. All right, I think that's just the four. Who's Ann? Uh, Ann, our uh, she's the, the admin person. Oh, okay. Ann Cerny. So, so can what happens? Can we put the rest on though? Do you want? To, can we undo that one? Can we what? Is she? Can we close that one out too, or no? Close which one out? Ann's. She's still on here. Oh. Yeah, I was doing all of the people that were. You and go. you're still recording. Oh. <laughs> Just an FYI.